Uh, for more insight into the Dominican Republic, we're joined by Giovanni Vicente Romero, international political strategist, CNN Espanol columnist, and associate faculty at Columbia University, where he teaches strategic communications. Giovanni, thanks so much for coming in. You know, this island, uh, it, it, this area is, is just simply hasn't gotten a lot of attention during this presidential election, at least not here in the, in the United States. Kind of bring us up to speed. Your take on all this, because uh, this is a popular president, won nearly 60% of the vote, and his challengers quickly uh, endorsed him uh, in the election on Sunday. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I think the recent elections in the Dominican Republic were a crucial moment for the country's democracy. As a political analyst, I was closely following the campaigns and electoral process. I was tr uh, truly surprised. The results have significant implications for the nation's future. I'm happy to share my insights today. I think one of the, uh, the most important things here we need to look at is just the implications and, and future prospects for the Dominican Republic. These new go this government faces some challenges and will need to prioritize some fiscal reforms in the medium term. So if the government is successful, this could lead to progress for the Dominican Republic when we keep in mind that Abinael will have almost absolute power since his party won 70% of the municipalities right. aspect. Party. And yesterday, they also won both chambers in Congress. So let's see how Abinader can keep checks and balances alive and functional as he guarantees separation of powers. Well, controlling uh, the, the legislature, as you said, he certainly can push uh, his uh, programs through. Let's talk about the state of the island nation's economy and the importance of tourism. And we heard in the story uh, leading into you the concern, lack of quality jobs. That's true. I think the Dominican Republic's economy is heavily reliant on tourism. Everybody knows that which accounts for uh, perhaps 11.6% of the nation's GDP. So the country's tropical climate and white sand beaches and other aspects of the country keep attracting attention from visitors, but we've been growing at a rate of 5% for the last few years. This is a, a, very, a very remarkable thing, but should this be sustainable, it's going mm -hmm. to depend a lot on how this government handled the situation. So in 1922, uh, the nation's tourism was named the best performing nation post-pandemic. But at, at, the, at, at the same time, it's important to, to uh, keep in mind that the country's tourism sector has made a remarkable recovery post-pandemic. Right. And the most important thing here is to see if he's going to, uh, President Abinader is going to be able to to get the country ready to make the necess take the necessary steps to leave no one behind. That's the problem. Wealth right. distribution. And Giovanni, we also have to talk about climate change. It's in those warm Caribbean waters. We know as the winds blow off uh, the coast of Africa and, and make their way over there, hurricanes are a huge concern right now, which fuel flooding, uh, mudslides. How concerned uh, do you think the island is about climate change? We just heard those very sobering numbers earlier. And what can this president do to sort of combat that? Absolutely. I think this president is very open to many things. Perhaps he is going to keep working on some policies in terms of climate change mitigation. Uh, the Dominican Republic is an island that is basically located in, in the way of these uh, natural disasters and, and hurricanes, uh, for example. So I think now is a good time for the country to come together to for him also to bring the country uh, uh, together and come up with some creative ideas in terms of mitigating uh, climate change, because the emergency is now. We don't have uh, much time, and also the United States and other countries can perhaps uh, provide some technical assistance or their experiences and best practices uh, for, for these kind of challenges. Uh, Giovanni, we have to talk about the other side of uh, Hispaniola as well, uh, Haiti. It has just kind of uh, devolved in, in, into chaos uh, recently. There's now a wall at the border between Haiti and the Dominican. What is the relationship uh, like? Clearly, uh, the president is doing everything he can to keep the unrest there from spreading over uh, to his country. Yeah, that's a great question. I think we are talking about two countries, two nations on one island. 
This is a very special case, very unique in the world. And you have, on one hand, the Dominican Republic, which has a more robust economy with a strong focus on tourism, which has helped uh, the, co the country maintain the stability. And on, on the other hand, you have Haiti, which is the poorest country in the hemisphere, the Western hemisphere. So you have basically two opposite sides of the story here. And DR, Dominican Republic, has a stable political environment, which is a functional government and institutions, which has contributed to its uh, ability to thrive. And that's precisely what Haiti is lacking right now. And the Dominican Republic could do so much uh, if they come together and they sit at the negotiation table and they come up with some ideas in terms of, of getting some common ground because it, 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 it can be a very uh, good strategy, a win-win situation here. So I think there's so much to do and there's so many opportunities mm. for both countries to take advantage of if they just sit and sit down and try to strategize some ideas for the good of their people.